I work at uh, Brunel University at the, for the modeling and simulation group. Uh, we are doing uh, a lot of simulation there, and today I'm going to discuss about open simulation uh, for public health in an African context. Uh, so, first of all, very briefly, I'm going to say what uh, we are doing in the modeling and simulation group uh, in a uh, nutshell, and then uh, discuss three examples of open simulation uh, for, uh, for healthcare. Uh, so, uh, we are very active at Brunel uh, on different kinds of simulation. Uh, first, uh, we are doing uh, different projects for uh, infrastructures in Africa, uh, scientific uh, science gateways and uh, cloud computing for accessing resources. Uh, on healthcare simulation, we have different projects. Currently, we work on a physical activity interventions model, which is an agent-based simulation for uh, giving evidence to the policymakers that some specific, uh, some interventions, uh, they are cost-effective to implement. Uh, we have done work on emergency medical services, so we have created a hybrid simulation using agent-based uh, models for uh, ambulance uh, services and discrete event simulation for hospital uh, simulation, so and creating a middleware uh, where they can communicate uh, between each other. Uh, another very interesting project that we were doing on healthcare, it was the MapGuide projects, and there we created uh, clinical pathway simulations. Uh, we modeled individuals uh, and the pathway, the clinical pathway for atrial fibrillation and for uh, prostate cancer. And we wanted to test the cost effectiveness of different treatment strategies. We also work, uh, uh, we, we also have done work on high performance simulation and distributed uh, simulation, and we have uh, uh, created a, a grid uh, simulation distributed for Ford uh, automotive uh, industry, and uh, among others for uh, Sellafield uh, nuclear waste uh, uh, management uh, in uh, the UK. Uh, we also worked on uh, projects uh, that created cloud-based simulation, so we call it modeling and simulation as a service, and it starts to standardize now, and we have a platform where we can deploy easily simulation software and then run the software on cloud resources. If we want uh, to burst the resources, and if our simulation needs uh, are, uh, uh, f we need more computing uh, uh, power for this, we can easily go to, uh, to cloud resources and uh, uh, scale, uh, scale it up. And uh, we use all this research for education as well. So we have students' projects that they use simulation, and uh, we also collaborate with different universities across the world and the NASA. Uh, creating distributed simulation, and uh, in a, an annual event, we have all these different models that our students create to communicate for a space simulation. Now, uh, in uh, healthcare simulation in African Codex, first of all, we created a demonstration, a, a, a model to demonstrate open uh, science principles in Africa for simulation. And this is an infectious disease simulation of an annual uh, uh, outbreak of an annual disease outbreak, and it was created by by, by Mr. Adedei Fabigi, and we thank him very much. He is a PhD student at Brunel University, and he created the Science Gateway for uh, our infection model. This is an agent-based simulation created, uh, uh, written in Repass Symphony. Repass Symphony is uh, open source. It is Java-based, so everybody can access it, and it is quite flexible. It can be uh, easily uh, interfaced with other software. Uh, an example of the interface is here, where we have uh, different parameters, input parameters for our model, and we test different scenarios for the dynamics of our population. And again, we can have visualization so we can see the network of infection uh, according to the behavior of our population. 
So the model essentially, it is a very, it is the default infectious disease model where we have uh, three types of agents, the susceptible population, the infected population, and then the recovered population. A susceptible, uh, the susceptible population can be infected when uh, in contact with, infection, with an infected agent, and the infected agents recover after some time and become a recovered agent. A recovered agent has immunity, but after uh, some times of contacting with infectious, uh, with the infected uh, population, it can become uh, as susceptible again and for so on. So we want to study the behavior of uh, the outbreak uh, by changing the dynamics of the initial population. If we have more infected, how this will behave. If we apply immunization, how the, uh, the, the infectious population will uh, behave uh, in our population. Uh, on our desktop application, we, we can visualize the output by uh, graphs. So we can see uh, how many uh, become how many become infected or recovered towards uh, uh, the uh, progress of time. And uh, we used this uh, model. Uh, we wanted to use it for uh, an open simulation. So what artifacts do we use for, or do we have for a simulation? We have uh, the simulations, uh, actually the software, we have the models uh, that we create, we need data, and then the results from our ex uh, for the execution of our experiments. And of course we need resources, simulation are a quite uh, a computing intensive exercises. And we want, of course, scientists to access our experiments and be able to reproduce it. Uh, so our approach is to do it openly. So we need to store our simulation artifacts, which are software data and maybe other artifacts, depends on the case study, on an open access document repository. Uh, we need to access this software by a science gateway. And then we need to access the scientists uh, that they created this research, this piece of research. So how we can do it? This is a concept paper that was published uh, in last year's uh, uh, DSRT 2016. It is Distributed Simulation and Real-Time Applications Workshop uh, by IEEE and ACM. Uh, and uh, it demonstrates how we can openly uh, create a simulation and share it. So in this paper, we have links with the DOIs of all the artifacts of the experiments, of the infectious disease model that I saw earlier as a desktop application. We have links with DOIs for the software, which is a virtual machine that runs Repast, or it can be any other simulation software. We have DOI for the model, the infectious disease model, DOI for the data that we use, and uh, the experiments that we run. And then uh, the Science Gateway link is there, so how we can access this, uh, uh, this open uh, simulation by a Science Gateway. And of course, uh, we have the identification of the researcher, at this point Simon's uh, org ID, where there we can find all the artifacts and they can be connected with the publications and all the research uh, work that is being done. And how we can do it in Science Gateway, we have, I'm sure you are familiar with this, we have seen it in Roberto's and Simon's presentations. So we have to submit our artifacts in the Open Access Data Repository, supported by SciGEA. And uh, when we submit, we have DOIs for all uh, the, uh, the artifacts of our work, which as you can see here, you have seen this before as well. It is the virtual machine to run for the software that we use to run. It is the virtual, uh, it is the DOI with uh, the model for the specific uh, application, and then DOIs for the experiments with the data uh, that uh, we run for the specific application, uh, for the specific demonstration application.
And uh, as I said, uh, Adedegi uh, created a, a science gateway for this application. So we need to have access, we need to register. As we said, the access is federated, so we can access it by using the credential of our organization. And then once we are logged in, we can see the applications uh, in the menu list, and we can find the one that we need, which is the last on the right, repast. And here we can access in a very easy, in, in a form like uh, env uh, interface, uh, the, the simulation. So here a user can enter input uh, parameters, different input parameters for the different population or whatever, or different uh, experiment that uh, they want to run. And they can submit the job. The job goes to virtual machine on a cloud or a grid on a distributed infrastructure. And then uh, on my workspace, I can see the jobs that are running. So I'm not sure if it is obvious, but it says that uh, the simulation is running at the moment. And when the simulation finishes the execution, we can download the results. Now we can download the results and uh, analyze it as we like, but we have uh, also created a visualization tool so we can upload our results uh, in the visualization tool and we can graphically uh, visualize the output of our experiment. So for example, every year we have an outbreak and how the uh, infection behave, the, the disease behaves. This is a demonstration, uh, as I said earlier. And of course, uh, this can be linked to the, to the scientists. Uh, an example of an ORCID uh, uh, site is here. This is Simon's uh, ORCID, where you uh, unique for every researcher. So uh, you can see every work or every publication and it can be linked and easily associated with the person. Another, uh, and this was a demonstration, now a work that we are doing on uh, physical activity interventions. It is an agent-based model that we want to individually uh, study the behavior of the persons and how different physical activity interventions can change the, the exercise that each individual is doing. So this is a UK uh, Department of Health funded project. Uh, it is led by Professor Julia Fox Rasby uh, in uh, the Health Economics Research Group at Brunel University. And um, this is the conceptual uh, model of an agent-based simulation. It was developed in Repast again. This, uh, uh, this is uh, the activities that are happening uh, for every ti simulation time step for every individual in the model. So we, uh, we include epidemiological data and um, we adjust the risk for cardiovascular disease according to the level of activity. And then, uh, according to the interventions and how uh, this affect the uh, activity of each individual, we can increase uh, the level of activity. And this in the next cycle will be included uh, in uh, the risk calculation. So we have the relative risks, usually it is decreased, and we want to study how this will affect uh, the, uh, the health of the population at the end. We want to do that so policymaker will have evidence that some specific interventions may be, they are more worth implementing uh, than uh, maybe others. And uh, the interface of this model is, looks like uh, something like that. This is the desktop application. We have the user interface with a, a form like a, a parameter space where a user can change the input parameters and test different scenarios with different cohort and uh, filtering out a cohort with, uh, by age or by disease with different medical history and so forth. 
For the visualization at the moment, we use uh, a simple color coding to, to see uh, the different levels of activity. So for example, if we have a red dot, the, pe the people are not active. If we have a green dot, we have active population. At the end, we have, uh, because we have a cohort, uh, we study it from uh, the starting of the simulation until the whole cohort uh, dies at the end. So what we want to do uh, with this model is to uh, translate it into an open simulation, like the one for the infectious disease, uh, to deposit all the artifacts in the open access document repository, and then create a science gateway so we can have all these input parameters as it was in a form like in a, in a science gateway way so we can share with other researchers. We uh, have begun collaboration between Brunel and the University of Fakra and we want to study physical activity interventions in Ghana at the moment. Now we face some challenge, of course, if we can, uh, the, the data of the model are ba that we have at the moment are based on a UK population, so uh, can these assumptions be applied for the Ghanaian population as well? These are some challenges that when we share uh, research and simulation, we have to take into consideration. And another simulation that we are working at the moment, uh, that it, it has been created in, for public health in the African context, uh, it is um, an HIV testing clinic simulation in South Africa. It was created on a commercial simulation package, Simulate, and uh, by a charity organization, the South It Now. So South It Now wanted to test, uh, to test uh, uh, people for HIV in Western Cape and uh, of course wanting to increase the number of, uh, uh, of people uh, that are being uh, tested and seen and educated with the minimum resources possible. It is a charity organization. So they wanted to optimize their processes. And uh, then uh, they collaborated with Simulate, which is a simulation software vendor in the UK. And they created a discrete event simulation uh, that it was used and uh, it was actually successful and they managed to increase the people that they, seen, uh, they have seen for uh, and tested. The South It Now model looks like that in the desktop application. Uh, so we have uh, people going through a process, so you cannot see it now, but they are going through a registration, they wait for seeing, uh, for being educated via a PC uh, video, and then uh, again they wait to uh, have the test, if they decide to take the test, and according to the results they either get out of the system or they have a second test if the test is positive. Now, if they wait for long, they, they leave. They don't stay uh, to complete the process. So we test different scenarios and the interface here, uh, it, it is very easy. So uh, these blue uh, buttons that you see there, you can just click and change the, uh, the input parameters of the model. So this model now, uh, it is open. Uh, and this is an example of an industrial uh, open simulation. Uh, Brunel initiated uh, the open access version of this model and uh, we wanted to show how uh, we can use simulation openly in, the, the Af in an African context. Uh, by accessing, uh, by following the link on the, at the top, uh, you can access uh, this simulation and you can test actually by yourself uh, different scenarios. Uh, this is really important and I would like to encourage, encourage you to, to follow the link and see how it looks like. Now, the web version and the, the science uh, gateway looks like that. So we have a 3D visualization. It is a simplified model of the actual model that it was used for, uh, for, for the South It Now. But uh, you can follow the link, access uh, this model, uh, change parameters by, uh, by clicking on the, link, or the buttons on the left and see by yourself how the simulation works. 
once you run experiments and you test with different resources or different Q speci uh, specifications. So, for example, if the Q expires after some time, so the people leave, or you may want to keep the Q and people wait as long as it uh, takes, and you run the simulation. So, when you run the simulation, the process is the same. So, we uh, launch uh, virtual machines. In this case, it is Amazon Cloud, and we run the, uh, we run the, the simulations there. And once our simulation execution finishes, we can see the results online uh, on the web browser as well. Uh, so you are really encouraged to follow this and uh, test uh, how we can use simulation for improving processes. And uh, in summary, we spoke about open simulation. We gave some examples, a demonstration model of infectious diseases, and how we created a science gateway for this, uh, a physical activity intervention model where we are in the process of actually uh, putting, on, putting it on a science gateway. And uh, we have seen some interest from uh, here as well, from Nairobi. And uh, then again, an industrial science gateway for HIV testing clinic in South, in South Africa. And thank you very much.